My name is uh, Brett Collier. Uh, I am a professor of wildlife biology at Louisiana State University, which is in Baton Rouge, uh, Louisiana. It's, it's an interesting place. It's been a very interesting last few days. I'm, I'm trying to get a handle on how doves exist in the landscape and, and where they exist in the landscape so that I can hopefully provide some utility to the conservation community with regard to the best uh, practices we can use to manage the doves here. I think probably with regard to the to the ear dove here, um, I think probably the longest term things that we can look at are the spatial distribution of the doves, where they're, what areas they're using as the annual cycle changes as we go from a dry season to a wet season, as we go from agricultural crops being unavailable to being available. Um, and then in addition, I think that there's some useful information that we can use from banded individuals, uh, rings that we talked about uh, around the legs, um, to identify where some of our juveniles are being born, hatched at, and then where they're being harvested at. And we can look at things like uh, fidelity yes. to a particular location, or if they're very widespread across the landscape, which provides a lot of useful information for the conservation community down here. The fact that Pointer Outfitters and any outfitter um, in the region is, is highly interested in conservation is important because they're one of the stakeholders that we have that um, are integral in the management of the resource. They have people on the ground every day. They know where the doves are at. I mean, you guys have shown me hundreds of nests and three or four entirely different habitat types yeah. today, right? Mm -hmm. That the doves are all using. So um, the, the relationship between the conservation community, the outfitters, the, the people who come in here to hunt the doves, um, the scientists like myself that come in here to try and study the doves, the benefit of having all of those organizations working together towards a, a positive solution for long-term sustainability yes. of, of the ear dove here in Argentina is, is really a good set of eyes and a good set of ears and hands that could all be working together. Um, I'm meeting with a lot of the conservation and the hunting community. That's effectively what my trip is about, is just to visit with people. Um, I've got two or three different uh, organizations I'm meeting with over the next two or three days. We're having a meeting on Wednesday with everyone at once mm -hmm. to talk about uh, management objectives, what their expectations are, what my expectations on what I can provide is. Um, everyone wants answers. Uh, I haven't been on the ground long enough or got enough data to deal in, in exact answers yet. Um, but it'll be a good conversation to hopefully get things started. Because I'm watching the doves fly behind us. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very, yeah, not a problem. Thanks for all your help. Absolutely. I'm glad to do it. Hope to see you again in Argentina. I will be back in December, it sounds like. <laughs>
as well as developing as within the hunting communities an appreciation for the non-game species um, that exist. And um, uh, there's uh, some really interesting models in Africa uh, where, uh, it, where when game species, especially large game, uh, isn't uh, hunted, uh, they don't have an economic value, uh, therefore the general populace doesn't value them and uh, they disappear. They don't have people to steward them. Mm. And so I think it's important to have a, uh, uh, to try to build value, uh, not only, mo you know, not only mo monetary value, but a uh, sort of a cultural value. <laughs> and, you know, so many, uh, so many areas of the planet um, have uh, our wildlife abundance is diminished, and it's really, uh, it's really special to visit an area uh, where there's still an abundance, uh, a great abundance, uh, and that's re one reason why I enjoy Alaska is because there's still a lot of abundance of wildlife there, uh, a lot of wild spaces that haven't been. Uh, one thing I noticed. Uh, uh, first, I, I looked on Google Maps mm -hmm. at uh, Cordoba yeah. and Argentina, and very short, 10 minutes. And uh, I noticed there was a lot of agriculture. Yes, uh, especially in this area. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I looked to the north, I think, and I saw forests. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I saw areas where the forest was uh, missing. It was forest land. I'm not sure if those lands are in Argentina or in other countries. Uh, but, um, uh, and so the first thing I thought as we, as I thought about Cordoba on our flight here, um, was, um, was wondering if Cordoba has uh, a developed um, conservation programs with agriculture, uh, with the farmers. Uh, one thing I've been a part of in the United States that I'm, very excited about. I think the United States is very successful. Is how well they work with uh, the agricultural producers to teach them and help them uh, integrate wildlife-friendly or wildlife-promoting practices into their agriculture that is profitable for them. 